Hi, Alan Stratton from Meswood Turns. For this week's project, let's turn this small vase out of elm burl. In this case, I was uh, processing the elm a while back. I had this small piece left over. I said, uh, well, I don't think it's going to be a good, almost threw it away. I was like, well, I'll rough it, see if I can get it to a rough stage. And then I said, well, I don't really like the looks of that, so I just put it on a shelf. And now a few months later, it's dry. And I said, well, will it survive? Well, I'll take a chance. And so I mounted it. Had some difficulty mounting, as you'll see in the video. And then finished it. Uh, tight knuck knuckle, white knuckle thing through the whole thing. But still, one of the other things, though, that I had to upgrade in order to do this was my donut chuck. The donut chucks compresses the object between so that you can do the bottom. In this case it's on a faceplate, threaded wood faceplate, has three holes with T-nuts on it to receive bolts, a center hole that I can use to make specialized center mounting, so for in this case this went on there to position it for the center, and then on the top side it, there's a master ring that the bolts go through and notice that the bolts the nuts are recessed so that they're not don't have any potential of hitting my hands and then to adapt this opening I have an, another insert this is for a small opening or any opening that I pre prefer I can just fit it into that little uh, mortise and so this one I think is yeah that's the one for it, it goes there and then to keep things handy, I have a slew of different sized bolts that I can use to cinch it down with. So that was essential for turning the bottom of this because there really wouldn't, wasn't any good way of holding it any other way with the number of eyes and discontinuities in it. So let's turn this small vase out of elm burl. When I rough turned this vase, I did not apply any sealer or any other treatment. I did not believe that I could finish it. It has a lot of eyes and cracks. Still, now, it looks like it might survive finishing. However, the original tenon is too rough to use. So how do I trim the tenon? In desperation, I grabbed a recent sphere and a cup chuck. With all that, I am able to gently press the vase against the sphere and cup chuck with the live center in its original divot. Then, ever so gently with my skew, trim the tenon to be rough it round again. Whew, it survived, but I'm not sure I can recommend that mount. Now with my spindle gouge, I am again gently trimming the exterior. I feel like this could come apart at any time. Next, trim the interior. If I thought the exterior was dicey, what now? Again, gingerly with my round nose scraper, I am trimming the inside. There are holes and cracks that dust is coming through. Then sand it thoroughly. What can I do about the base? I would rather not carve it. I recently revised my donut chuck. With three bolts, I can apply fairly even pressure. Some masking tape protects the surface from marring. On the faceplate, another disc has been turned to match the vase opening. I cannot call that a jam chuck, but it serves to center the vase and apply even pressure. After trimming the base, it gets a thorough sanding.
Then disassemble the donut chuck. I can fit it with different size centers for different applications. Finally, a bath in walnut oil makes the grain, burl eyes, cracks, and bark gaps pop. I like it, and I'm happy it survived. Sometimes, I just do not know what will look great when finished. I am surprised from a chunk of wood I almost threw away when it was raw. I almost threw it away when it was dry. I am happy to be wrong. Please give this video a thumbs up, subscribe on my website, and tell your friends. I appreciate your comments and questions. Every week I make a new wood turning video and add it to my website. Please wear your full face shield. That's for safety anytime the lathe is running. I'll see you next week with another wood turning video.